Good day everyone, Dr. Polaris here. Megaraptora is a clade of carnivorous theropod dinosaurs known mostly from South America and Australia, but with partial remains recovered from Laurasia as well. Its derived members, the Megaraptoridae, are noted for their elongated hand claws and proportionally large arms, which are usually reduced in size in other large theropods. Megaraptorans are incompletely known, as no complete skeleton has ever been found. However, they still possessed a number of unique features. Their forelimbs were large and strongly built, and the ulna bone had a unique shape in members of the family Megaraptoridae. The first two fingers were elongated, with massive curved claws, while the third finger was small. Megaraptoran's skull material is very incomplete, but a juvenile Megaraptor specimen described in 2014 preserved a portion of the snout, which was long and slender. Leg bones referred to Megaraptorans were also quite slender, and similar to those of Salurosaurs, and were adapted for running. Although Megaraptorans were thick-bodied theropods, their bones were heavily pneumatized or filled with air pockets. The vertebrae, ribs, and the ilium of the hip were pneumatized to an extent which was very rare among theropods, only seen elsewhere in taxa such as Neovenator. The clade was originally named in 2010 as a subset of the family Neovenatoridae, a group of lightly built allosauroids related to the massive Carcharodontosaurid such as Giganotosaurus and Carcharodontosaurus. A 2013 phylogenetic analysis by Fernando Novas and his colleagues disagreed with this classification scheme, and instead argued that Megaraptorans evolved deep within Tyrannosauroidea. Subsequent refinements to Novas's data and methodologies have supported a third position for the group, at the base of Salurosauria, among other controversial theropods such as Gualicho, but not within Tyrannosauroidea. Future studies, coupled with more complete fossil finds, may clear up this confusing taxonomic position. Regardless of this, it is clear that Megaraptorans experienced a large amount of convergent evolution with both Neovenator-like allosauroids or basal salurosaurs. Megaraptorans are most diverse in the early late Cretaceous period of South America, particularly Patagonia. However, they had a widespread distribution. Fuwang Venator and Fukui Raptor, the most basal and second most basal known members of the group, lived in Thailand and Japan respectively. Megaraptoran material is also common in Australia, and the largest known predatory dinosaur from the continent, Australovenator, was a Megaraptoran. These animals were medium to large sized theropods, ranging from Fukui Raptor, which was about 4.2 meters long, to the 9 meter Erosteon, and the 42 foot long Bahariosaurus, if that is a true member of the group. Most Megaraptorans are known from very fragmentary remains, although certain characteristics can be identified in multiple members of the clade. At least some, such as Murus Raptor and Erosteon, had extensively pneumatic bones, most noticeably in the ilia and the ribs which likely housed sinuses connected to the lungs similar to modern birds. The slender leg bones and long metatarsals of several species indicate that members of this group likely had cursorial habits. This lineage of theropods contained the derived family Megaraptoridae, along with a number of basal forms. The oldest and most basal of all Megaraptorans was probably Fuwang Venator, from the early Cretaceous of Thailand, roughly 130 million years ago. Like most of these animals, it is known from very scrappy remains. A close relative, Fukui Raptor, has been recovered from slightly younger rocks in Japan and is thankfully known from better material. The type specimen is a partial skeleton discovered in the Kitadani Quarry in the Fukui Prefecture. It is thought that this specimen, which would have measured about 4.2 meters long in life and weighed about 175 kilograms, was not mature, and adults may have been significantly larger. The remains of many other individuals have been found in this quarry, with numerous humeri, femurs, and teeth being assigned to this species. However, the other individuals recovered from the same locality are mostly juveniles that were even smaller than the holotype, in the smallest case less than a quarter of the holotype size. 
All other potential basal Megaraptorans are known from very scrappy remains, and may or may not be true members of the group at all. The dubious Australian theropod Rapator, known only from a single manual bone, is sometimes regarded as a Megaraptoran, as is Vayuraptor from Thailand. Interestingly, the large North American genus Syats was initially included here as well. However, more recent studies of this animal have concluded that it was a Neovenatorid allosaurian. Another somewhat dubious group of theropods, the Bahariosaurids, are also sometimes included here, and in truth, these dinosaurs probably deserve their own future video to themselves. Much like the Megaraptorids, potential Bahariosaurids are known from incomplete fossils and may not even be a natural grouping including the genre Bahariosaurus, Deltadromius, Auniraptor, and Gualicho. The latter genus, Gualicho shinyai, has recently been recovered as a basal Salurosaur outside of Megaraptora. Whatever the case, basal Megaraptorans are a poorly understood bunch, and hopefully future discoveries can help clear up this fragmented picture. Now we come to the family Megaraptoridae itself, and at the very least, these animals are known from better material than their more basal cousins. This was a group restricted to Gondwana throughout the Cretaceous, with genre inhabiting South America, Australia, and probably also Antarctica and New Zealand. Megaraptorid are a fairly recently described lineage, with Aerosteon the first to be scientifically studied in 1996. This six metre long carnivore dwelt in the Santonian stage of, of Cretaceous Argentina, and is famous for its incredibly pneumatic skeleton. A close relative, Murus raptor, was described in 2016, and seems to have been larger, at possibly up to 7 to 8 metres long as an adult. Other South American Megaraptorans include the 8 metre long Tratienia and the odd Orcoraptor. This animal was initially regarded as being a Maniraptoriform Salurosaur due to its specialised teeth, which were similar to those of Dromaeosaurids and Compsognathids. However, many other features contradict those of those families and other Salurosaurs, so its original describers were unable to conclusively assign it to any specific family. More recent studies have explained that these Salurosaur-like traits are also present in some other Megaraptorans. For example, Orcoraptor's postorbital bone is almost identical to that of Aerosteon. The type genus for Megaraptoridae was, unsurprisingly, the genus Megaraptor. The discovery of this creature, represented by highly distinctive curved claws and a complete forelimb, gave paleontologists the first clear look at the unique anatomy of Megaraptorids. The genus was initially described as a giant dromaeosaur, known primarily from a single claw about 30 centimeters long, that resembled the sickle-shaped foot claw of dromaeosaurs. The discovery of a complete front limb, however, showed that this giant claw actually came from the first finger of the hand. In 2010, Gregory S. Paul estimated its length at 8 meters and its weight at about a ton. In 2014, a juvenile specimen was described which preserved much of the jaws and teeth which indicated that Megaraptor possessed a long slender snout with small teeth similar to those of basal Tyrannosauroids. Another important Megaraptoran discovery was Australovenator, known from the Cenomanian stage of the late Cretaceous in Australia. It is known from partial cranial and postcranial elements, which were described in 2009 by Scott Hocknell, although additional descriptions and analyses continue to be published. It is the most complete predatory dinosaur discovered in Australia. According to Hocknell, it was 2 metres tall at the hips and 6 metres long, with a weight of about 500 to 1,000 kilograms. The parts of the holotype, as it was initially described, which are held at the Australian Age of Dinosaurs Museum of Natural History, consists of a left dentary, teeth, partial forelimbs and hind limbs, a partial right ilium, ribs and gastralia. With very comprehensive and well-preserved hand and foot remains, Australovenator has been made a topic of various research papers studying the dynamics of theropod limbs. A 2015 study tested the range of motion of Australovenator's arms using computer models, 
and found that it had flexible arms, with the forelimbs capable of making an angle of 144 to 66 degrees with the humerus, an elbow range of motion similar to that of many raptoriforms. Unusually, its radius could slide independently of the ulna when its arm was flexed, similar to that of birds, but unlike most non-avian dinosaurs. However, the study also found that Australovenator's fingers were capable of extension far beyond those of any other sampled theropod. This study concluded that Australovenator's flexibility, facilitated by a combination of traits in both primitive and advanced theropods, played a significant role in prey capture, giving it the ability to grasp prey towards its chest to make it easier for the weak jaws to disembowel food. As regards the phylogenetic positions of Megaraptorans, ideas on the topic have ranged wildly over the years. The genre which make up Megaraptora had been placed in a number of different theropod groups before the formation of the clade in 2010. Megaraptor and Fukuiraptor were independently considered to be giant dromaeosaurs when they were first discovered in the 1990s, due to the large hand claws being misidentified as foot claws. However, these mistakes were rectified after closer inspection of the holotype, or the discovery of new specimens of Megaraptor. By the mid to late 2000s, they were considered to be basal tetaneurons of some kind, usually members of Allosauroidea. Smith et al. in 2008 reported Megaraptor-like ulnae from Australia, and found evidence that Megaraptor was a spinosauroid. The same year, Orcoraptor was described as an unusual giant Salurosaur, with some similarities with the much smaller Compsognathids. Erosteon was considered a relative of Allosaurus, while Australovenator was considered to be a sister taxon to Carcharodontosauridae. The influx of new data in the late 2000s led to several major reanalyzing of basal tetaneurin phylogenetics, with interesting implications for Megaraptora. A study by Roger Benson and Steve Brusati in 2010 found that Allosauroidea included a major subdivision known as Carcharodontosauria, which was split into Carcharodontosauridae and a newly named family, Neovenatoridae. Neovenatorids, as formulated by these authors, contained Neovenator, Chilintisaurus, and the newly named clade, Megaraptora. Megaraptora, as defined here, contained Megaraptor, Fukuiraptor, Orcoraptor, Erosteon, and Australovenator. These genera were allied with other Neovenatorids on the basis of several features spread out through the skeleton, particularly the large amount of pneumatization present. The pneumatic ilium of Erosteon was particularly notable, as Neovenator was the only other taxon known to have that trait at the time. Neovenatorids were envisioned as the latest surviving Allosauroids, which were able to persist well into the late Cretaceous due to their low profile and Salurosaur-like adaptations. Later studies supported this hypothesis, such as Carano, Benson and Sampson in 2012's large study of tetaneurin relationships, and Zano and Makovicki's 2013 description of the newly discovered theropod Syats, which they placed within Megaraptora. However, an alternative hypothesis was forming, first published by Fernando Novas et al. in 2012. Novas and his colleagues argued that the features used to link Neovenator to Megaraptora were more widespread than the 2010 paper implied, and that the proposed Salurosaurian convergences may have showed a legitimate connection between Megaraptora and Salurosauria. In addition, they noted that Benson, Carano, and Brissati only sampled three salurosaurs in their analysis. Novas et al.'s arguments were formulated and published in a 2013 review of Patagonian theropods, which removed Megaraptora from Carcharodontosauria and placed the group within Salurosauria. More specifically, Megaraptorans were found to be deep within Tyrannosauroidea, a radiation of basal salurosaurs including the famed Tyrannosaurids. As Novas et al. removed Megaraptora from Neovenatoridae, they named a new family, Megaraptoridae, which contained all Megaraptorans apart from basal taxa. They found little evidence that Chilantisaurus, Neovenator, or Syats were Megaraptorans, but they did place the Tyrannosaurid Eotyrannus within Megaraptora. 
Despite the hypothesized close relation between these animals and tyrannosauroids, Novas et al. noted that the Megaraptoran lineage had a functional morphology which strongly diverged from those of tyrannosaurids. While tyrannosaurids had small arms and large powerful heads, Megaraptorans had large arms, giant claws and relatively weak jaws. The skull of a newly discovered juvenile specimen of Megaraptor, published in 2014, supported this hypothesis due to its similarities to the skull of basal tyrannosauroids such as D. long. Nevertheless, Megaraptorans still retained many similarities to carcharodontosaurs such as Neovenator, so the uncertainty behind their classification was not fully resolved. In 2016, a third hypothesis for Megaraptoran relations was put forward by Porphyry et al. That year, a new theropod dinosaur was discovered, Gualicho. The addition of Gualicho, Delta Dromius, and several corrections with the Novas et al. dataset led to an interesting result. Megaraptorans were far removed from the position deep within Tyrannosauroidea, which Novas et al. had proposed. However, Megaraptora was placed at the very base of Salurosauria. Along with Chelintisaurus, Gualicho, and Tyrannoraptora. Porfiri et al. also commented on the formation of Bahariosauridae and noted that Gualicho may be a Bahariosaurid in light of the similarities with Deltadromius. If this was the case, then Megaraptorans experienced much more diversity in their forelimbs than previously thought, as Gualicho had very small Tyrannosaurid like forelimbs. In 2018, Delacorte and Griot published a study focusing on tyrannosauroids. They reused Porphyry's analysis, though corrected several scores and added data from more recent studies. This returned Neovenator to a monophyletic Allosauroidea and placed Megaraptorans as basal, non-tyrannosauroid Salurosaurs. Murus Raptor was also placed as the second most basal Megaraptoran, ahead of Fukui Raptor. If this turns out to be the case, then it would appear that ancestral salurosaurs were medium-sized theropods that would later shrink in size. This would also indicate that we should expect to find Jurassic Age Megaraptorans, most likely in the Northern Hemisphere. Whatever these theropods turn out to be, they are certainly a unique and very interesting group, developing novel features such as enlarged forelimbs for hunting prey not typically seen in carnivorous dinosaurs. Thanks for watching everyone. Next week I'll be covering the Nimravids, a family of superficially cat-like carnivorans that lived from the Middle Eocene to the Late Miocene. See you again soon. Cheerio.